Friends of Leaf, welcome. Welcome everyone. We are just about ready to start the proceedings for this evening. So I ask you to either find a spot to stand or find a spot to sit. And since we will be halting the food service for uh, during our entertainment, just make sure you've uh, got yourself ready. <laughs> so, Thank you, thank you, <laughs> thank you for tapping the glasses. Okay, friends, um, we have a very special evening tonight. Um, my name is, uh, is Donna Dasko, and I am a member of the Board of LEAF, and I am the co-chair of LEAF's fundraising committee. And it's my pleasure to be your MC this evening. Now, MC, that could mean master of ceremonies, or it could be mistress of ceremonies. Uh, I don't like either of those terms, so I'm gonna call myself the doctor of ceremonies tonight. So that's my title. <laughs> I'm impressed anyway. So I'd like to begin by acknowledging that we are meeting today on the lands traditionally shared by the Anishinaabe and the um, Haudenosaunee and Huron Wende peoples, and the home of the Mississaugas of the New Credit region. So, and I want to say that this is LEAF's major fundraising event, and it is the first time that we have had an evening gala. We've moved from the breakfast format to the evening format, and we hope you have a lovely time tonight. There are two people I would like to introduce. There are many people to welcome, but, but two people I would particularly like to introduce. And first of all, I'd like to welcome Her Honor Elizabeth Dowdswell, who is the Lieutenant Governor of Ontario. And she is here, uh, where is she? Oh, there she is. Thank you so much for coming. It's great to see you. Wonderful. And I would also like to introduce uh, uh, Indira Nadu. Harris, who is the Status of Women Minister for the Ontario Government. There she is. Thank you for coming, Indira. Thank you so much. So we have an exciting evening planned of entertainment, food, drink, games. You've got to go and try these games, and you've got to get pictures of yourself so we can put your pictures up on the, on the screen here. As I said, we're going to be pausing our food service for the next 20 minutes while we enjoy the entertainment that we have planned for this evening. Our special guest this evening is a woman who is probably well known to many of us in the room. Her reputation precedes her. She is best known for her shows, My Boyfriend's Back and There's Gonna Be Laundry, remember that? Back in 1987 and her latest which is The Big What Now, which she presented earlier this year at the Fleck Dance Theater. She is dynamic, she is hilarious, she is a writer, she is a performer, she is a director, and she has written seven one-woman shows. So please join me in welcoming Sandra Shamus to our stage tonight. Thank you very much. This, uh, this, has this has to go. So um, this is going to be a bit of a different, wait a second, is, is my mic on? Is my mic on? Okay. Um, this is a bit of a different situation for me in that you're split like this. So I'm going to invite you to come and just find any fucking chair you can <laughs> because I'd love to have people in the audience in front of me. I don't think I'm out of bounds doing that, by the way. What are they going to do? Fire me? Come on, you guys. Come sit down. Oh, that's nice. Thank you. Um, the other thing I'm going to have to beg your patience with tonight is my voice is not great. Um, 
I just, I couldn't say no. I could not stay home and sit in my sauce. Uh, <laughs> I do smell like Vicks still, and I have washed heavily. Uh, but I, you know, so I know how excited you are to see one another because the lights are on, and that's how it happens. But I'm going to have to ask you to be quiet just because I, I, this is all I got. So are we cool with that? Yeah? yeah? yeah. We're good? Yeah? Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I would, I've done these leaf uh, things on a couple of occasions, maybe three or four, uh, across Canada. And they've always been at the crack of fucking dawn. <laughs> and I was so enamored with leaf that I would get up a full 13 hours before I would regularly perform <laughs> to fundraise for this organization. So deeply do I believe in what it is that you all do and how grateful I am that this organization exists. So uh, thank you very much. I have, um, I have my little uh, lemon ginger tonic. I just, I believe in transparency. You should know everything. I, I have a Ricola in my pocket in case it gets terrible. I'm only here 20 minutes, or maybe 10, given how I'm going right now. Oh, oh, theatrical lighting. <laughs> how fantastic is that? OK, I also brought my script because I'm postmenopausal, and I won't even remember I've been here. Um, OK, we good? We good? Yeah, we good? Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. You should do that quickly and then get out of my face. Yeah. <laughs> Because, you know, if you don't ask for what you want, it won't be given. OK. So I'm going to tell you a story of another fundraising event that I was invited to. Oh, look, I walk. Um, and uh, it I was invited to uh, MC a small fundraising event um, in a town that's just north of my farm. Uh, they, I used to volunteer for the organization. And they found out I was a comedian, eh? So uh, they invited me to come and MC their volunteer appreciation evening. And all I had to do was read the names of the people who had distinguished themselves. And then a plaque would be offered. And you know, you know the drill. So I said, that's great. And if that's all I have to do, fantastic. Just give me the list. So I asked for the list. And I asked for the list. And I asked for the fucking list. And I only got the list on the night. Just a quick aside, whenever you have the opportunity to work with chaotic people, say no. <laughs> I, I don't know if you've had that opportunity, but I've learned that people who are chaotic create chaos and then feed on it. <laughs> and it's like, it's so terrible. It's off. Anyway. So let me give you the lay of the land. We're at the Legion, as you know, <laughs> right? All the nice round tables are have white like this with a little centerpiece. I am sitting at the table with this list of names, and I am panicked because I don't know how to pronounce the names. And I want to, I want to and I want to respect the people who have given so much of their time and energy. So I'm sitting at the table, and I guess they seat about eight, right? And it's just women because the men have gotten up to get the ladies drinks. Because you know, mother loves a gin and tonic. So I'm sitting there with the women, and I'm petitioning one of the women to help me pronounce the names. As I'm doing that, the woman to my right leans right into my face. And she says, I'm Teresa. Call me Terry. I'm 89. I went, yes, you are. You are fully 89 years old. She's got red hair that's just like, it looks like she's on fire, to be honest with you. I say, nice to meet you, Teresa. If you don't mind, I'm just going to concentrate on this list. I really want to do it justice. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I go back to the page. I literally just, you know, bend my head. She grabs my hand. 
I go, yes. She goes, now, dear, where's your husband? <laughs> and I said, well, I, I, I think he's with his wife. <laughs> I, I don't keep tabs on him anymore. Uh, Oh, she says, oh, no. A pretty girl like you, not married? I said, I know, right? Is there no justice in this fucking world? I say, well, Teresa, Terry, I'm pretty because I'm not married. <laughs> oh, and the ladies had a little chuckle there, you know. As we're... As we're talking, the woman that's sitting behind Terry leans in, looks me dead in the eye, and says, so what do you do all day? <laughs> Women know this because for this woman, being married is a job. <laughs> and if I don't hit the deck running every morning, picking up wet towels out of the shower, you know, making the bed, running downstairs to make breakfast and pave the way for him. What the fuck am I doing all goddamn day? And she really wants to know. So, to avoid an international incident, I, always, I just say what I always say when people don't understand my lifestyle. I say, well, I don't know, but it takes me all day to do it. <laughs> Next morning, I'm at home in front of the picture window. Like, here's my kitchen sink, yellow gloves, big window, and I have my front field. I live on a farm, and my front field is there. And I'm standing there, and I'm just thinking about last night, thinking about how I never will work with those people again. <laughs> thinking, but mostly I was thinking about the couples. I was thinking about everybody there being a couple. Terry announces at a certain point in the evening that they've been married 70 years. I might be the only woman in Canada who doesn't believe that longevity equals success. Like, <laughs> I think it equals tenacity, but not necessarily success. But I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about what does that look like now? Like, what does being in a relationship in your 50s look like now because all the criteria, the prior criteria is gone. I mean, certainly I, I need love, but I don't need a house and a home and I don't need all, I have it. So ultimately it's just gonna be about fun and love, right? So kind of, you know, mining my history, I, I realized I might not actually trust myself because historically I'm, you know, I'm attracted to the family fuck up. I don't know, it, I don't know if you know this guy or <laughs> you, you're with this guy right now. Uh, it might happen. But this guy, he's got, he is, he's so many things. He has had every opportunity that his family can offer. He's interesting, he's a feminist, he's emotionally aware, he's creative. He's he, everything, and he cannot get his shit together to save his life. Yeah, but the one thing this guy has that his entire family does not have is a sense of humor. Oh my God, I love to laugh so much, so much, and if I find you funny, I will imprint on you like a baby duckling. <laughs> Seriously. Like, I am so enamored by that. And I, you don't even have to be good looking, seriously. If there's a spark of sexuality, I will climb you like a tree. Like, this is, <laughs> like, it's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah, but no, he cannot, he cannot rub two sticks together and make a little fire for himself, you know. He's got bankruptcies, he's got multiple marriages, still going, you know. He's never been divorced. He's, <laughs> You know, he's got deportation orders, you know, and oh, I love him. Oh my God, I love him. Yeah, it never works out. I don't know why. It's, just, it's, a, it's a mystery. So I start thinking to myself, standing there in my yellow gloves, oh my God, I'm over here. <laughs> How fascinated am I by me right now? 
no, no. She'll start talking and I won't want that. Um, so I start thinking, what are the other women in my age range doing right now? Like I start wondering, like, what are the other 50-something women doing? It seems that in, in the 50s, some of the women start migrating over to the other team. Yeah, 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 there they are there. Uh, I know. I'm like, and this is the thing. They are all having the time of their lives. <laughs> like, if I hear another fucking blissful story, I'm going to shoot myself. Yeah, there are, they're so, un, their happiness is unbridled. You know, I hear stories like, oh my God, oh my God, did she tell you she took us to Tuscany for our anniversary? Oh my God, she thought of everything, every little tiny detail. Every li there wasn't a step wrong. Okay, well, there, uh, one little thing happened. But a really great thing happened because of it. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, we were, we were supposed to go to this pension, right? And they missed our reservation, but they found us a way better place at a little farmhouse tucked away where she makes bouffola mozzarella. It's like, shut up! Shut up your new lesbian mouth. Just shut it. Ah. I'm on my knees praying to the sweet baby Jesus, you know. Do I have enough lesbian credits? Come on. Come on. Because on paper, I am an excellent lesbian. I own a farm. I have a tractor. I'm just saying. I'm just putting it out there. But no. No, I'm still on team cock, as it turns out. So, <laughs> just, I, I was just born this way, okay? It's not a choice. Okay, so I don't know, I don't know how to do that. Like, I don't, there are a couple of things in my way, like to find a partner. First of all, I live in the middle of fucking nowhere. Men are not parachuting into my north field, you know? It's like, oh, look, cat, it's a man. I'm going to put pants on. <laughs> so I mentioned, these, I mentioned this to a woman friend of mine. And she goes, oh my god. Oh my god. Takes out her phone. Don't you know about this? She hits her phone. Do you know about these dating apps? I go, what are you speaking of? She said, are you living under a rock? I go, yes. What? It's a nice rock. I paid premium for it. So she hits her phone and she says, it's an app, it's a dating app, it's called Tinder. Do you know about it? I go, no, I, I don't. She goes, yeah. So she hits her phone and there's a man in her hand. <laughs> I go, there's a guy in your hand, there's a man there. She goes, I know, what is wrong with you? She goes, yeah, so if I like this guy, I swipe right. But if I don't, I swipe left. I go, oh my God, there's another guy there just like, she goes, there's hundreds of them. Are you, like, where are you? She says, you just go home and you load this app onto your phone. I went, it's like shopping at home. It's like, <laughs> it's like when the seed catalog comes in. It's like, <laughs> so I go home. I find out I need Wi-Fi <laughs> 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 to load the app. I only got Wi-Fi in August of 16. So I wait, and the next morning I call a friend of mine who lives in Brampton, and I say, listen, I've got this app I want to load. Can I come by? He goes, yeah, sure, come on in. So we come by, we make tea, we're loading this app onto my phone, and there's, you know, there's all the, you know, the particulars. Uh, show me men. <laughs> okay. Uh, age range on either side of mine. And oh, by the way, if you're interested, Tinder ends at 60. <laughs> there's no sex for you. Uh, no. Uh, and then range. So well, your area, right? So I'm the center, and then you scribe a circle around you, and everybody in that area gets your photo, and you get theirs. So I say to my host, I'm going to say, I'm going to put 75K. And he looks at me and goes, 75K? You drive 75K to get laid? I said, well, I drove 30 for the app. Like, 
I'm halfway there. Like, <laughs> okay, so we've, we're on the Tinder now. God bless. Oh, so I dress nice. You know, I'm so excited. And I, I hit it. And I'm like, and it feels like they're in my house. Like, honestly, it was so <laughs> weird to me. It was like, oh, hi. <laughs> How do you do? It's nice to meet you. <laughs> uh, okay, yes, you're good looking. <laughs> no, no, not you so much, no. And, and I realized I, this ticked up pretty quickly because I was getting quite mercenary. It's like, no, 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 fuck, no, no, no. What the hell? Get yourself, a, you know, blah, blah. I was yelling at them, cut your hair. No. So now I went online, I went to, because I have a phone and I have Google. So I went online and I found out how you Tinder. How, how do you Tinder? And, I, I, and the people who Tinder on always, like Tinder files, never swipe left. They only ever swipe right, right? This is tantamount to like uh, fishing with dynamite, right? <laughs> All the fish come like floating dead to the surface <laughs> and you just kind of wade through and pick whatever you want. <laughs> That's not fucking sporting, let me say that right now. I get a message. Oh my God, you've got, a, you've got a message. And then it says, give him a call, send him a message, hurry up, what's wrong? Are your hands tied? Get, they're pushing, 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 like the whole time. I'm thinking, fuck, he can send me a message. What, what's he doing with his hands that he can't send me a message? But he doesn't send me a message, which is the message. But I have to practice. I, have, I'm, okay, I, am horrible at, I am horrible at flirting. I'm awful, I'm the worst, honestly. I think it's lying. I think flirting is manipulative. So, like, if a guy's going, I go, what? Like that. <laughs> I'm not inviting, it turns out. <laughs> I don't understand why boys won't play with me. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so I, I want to practice. I need to practice. So I send him this message. Hi. Seems that Tinder uh, has matched us. Um, but we're not chatting. Does that mean we're having our first fight? <laughs> I thought that was charming. <laughs> but no, nothing happened. I think we're still fighting, that's the thing. <laughs> nah. I took it off. I, you know, even at 75K, I was still bumping into just Etobicoke, to be honest with you. I mean, the... the the odds were good, but the goods were odd, you know, <laughs> that kind of thing. Then I found out about OkCupid. Okay I don't know if anybody here knows about this. Probably not. I'm the only one, generally, that ever is on these things. Um, but I didn't need a Wi-Fi, so I could do that all by myself. So I did. I put my, you know, I put my head on there. Hi, this is a replica of my head. And I said a few words about myself, which was, uh, turns out to be the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. I have hair. You know, uh, uh, my skin covers my entire skeletal structure. Like, I didn't, I don't, honestly didn't know how to, you're supposed to say things like, I love skydiving and, you know, lime. I don't know, like, anyway. So there was a little, and I just, you know, I put it out there and I waited for all the handsome men in the interweb to come flocking to my door. <coughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I still find that funny. Uh, and there was a flurry off the top. There was absolutely a little flurry off the top. But what was most significant was how often I was getting hit on by 20-year-old men. 20-somethings. I'm not even kidding. Like, I didn't even know where that was coming from. <coughs> Pardon me. The first guy, the first photo that showed up was hit. OK, so he's, his hat's like this. His t-shirt is up like this. He's got abs you can see from space. Like, <laughs> all right, his pants are low, so those, there's those two lines, right, like that. Uh, the phone, you can see the phone. And his note to me was, sup. <laughs> so I write back, no, I've eaten, thanks. <laughs> I, I didn't understand this app. All. Like, I thought, oh my God, son, does your mom know you're on the computer? <laughs> like, I was off, like, what in the world is going on? Next guy's like, you are H-A-W-T. It's like, you 
R S T U P I D. <laughs> like, oh no. And another guy, wanna fuck? <laughs> well, when you put it pretty like that, <laughs> it sure makes it hard to say no. But let me try. No! The last guy, his photograph was two people, so I didn't know which, who was speaking to me. And by now, I fucking had it, right? The guy writes, you look tall. How are we going to reproduce with that shit? Come on, think about it. I go, yeah, I'm a giant. Are you Italian? Yes, I'm an Italian giant. Would you ever date a younger guy? He said, I cannot date you, you have two heads and I'll never know which one to look at. <laughs> what am I working with here? He says, you know you want to. <laughs> Cheeky two-headed monkey. I go, why would I want to? To hook up. Oh, it's just sex. It's just sex. I'm so naive, like seriously, I'm the most naive person in the world, but I'm, I've, I'm figuring out that the 20-something guys have figured out that the 50-something women want to have sex. I mean, I'm, I'm not that imaginative. Honestly, I'm pretty vanilla, like, okay, French vanilla, but I'm still pretty vanilla. And, and, and so that's what's happening. The 20-something guys have figured out that the 50-something women want to have sex, which is something the 50-something men have not fucking figured out. <laughs> I will tell you how I know. <laughs> and I love men, and I have no choice. But on the interweb, most of the photos of guys kind of just say, I've given up the will to live. <laughs> and then there are the guys who are in boats. They are in boats, yeah? And they are holding a dead fish. A am I the only one seeing the metaphor in that? <laughs> I, I don't know. I hope springs eternal, to be honest, you know, we're doing our best. Uh, but I do have, I do actually hold out hope, and I'll, um, I'll tell you why. So this was offered, to, this actually came to me yesterday on Facebook. Um, <clears throat> pardon me, I have to do that thing again. So Sarah, the woman, part, <laughs> burning, burning ginger. Uh, one of the women on my Facebook feed is on a, on a dating site, and she came across this. So it says, if you like Catherine O'Hara, Eugene Levy, John Candy, Elvira Kurt, Sandra Shamus, John Stewart, Amy Schumer, Tina Fey, and Amy Poehler, then we'll probably have... <clears throat> We'll probably laugh together and are probably well matched politically. Well, I almost wept, to be honest with you. First of all, that my name is on the internet and a guy and it's a guy. A guy wrote this. I the second I wrote I read I read it, I was like in love with him. <laughs> Primarily because I remember personal ads where guys like a while ago, and maybe even still now. <clears throat> Pardon me, please. Where the guy would write a, a personal ad saying that the woman must have a good sense of humor. And what that generally meant was that she would laugh at his jokes. <laughs> Not generate, no, no, she can't be funny on her own. Oh. We're shutting down, people. <coughs> I only have like three sentences left. So she can't be funny on her own because that would change the power dynamic, right? When you're funny, it's a power. But there's really no, that shouldn't happen in love, right? It should be shared. And I read this and I recognize that this guy is, much, is very much interested in sharing a power dynamic because frankly, if you're in a partnership where both people are laughing, you cannot fucking lose. And there's the end of it, thank God. I'm out of here. Thank you very much. Okay. All right.
Thank you, Sandra. Thank you so much for entertaining us this evening. I'm, uh, thank you. It was terrific. Thank you so much. I'm, uh, I'm thinking about that Tinder, eh? That sounds pretty interesting as a divorced woman of a certain age. Uh, 60, hey, that sounds pretty good to me. So I just want to take a couple of minutes to thank our sponsors and to welcome uh, all of you again to, to our LEAF fundraising event. I want to extend a very special welcome to LEAF founders, some of whom are here this evening, current and former board members, special guests, and government officials. Special thanks to our generous long-term sponsors and supporters of this Persons Day event activity. Let me introduce our sponsors to you now. This year, for the first time ever, we are so grateful to have a sponsor in our supreme category, and that sponsor is the Honorable Margaret Norrie McCain, whom you will meet later this evening. Where is she? Thank you. I will read through the other sponsors. Um, at our partners level, a big thank you to Delaney Capital Management, the Elementary Teachers Federation of Ontario, Koski Minsky LLP, and TD Bank Financial Group for their support for tonight and for your support for LEAF over the many years. Thank you. We have more sponsors to thank at our advocates level. At our advocates level, many thanks to the Bank of Montreal, Bogarosh and Associates LLP, QP, QP, <laughs> KPMG, and uh, the Ontario Secondary School Teachers Federation, OSSTF, somewhere, great. And uh, at our associates level, thank you to Aird and Burles, Goldblatt Partners, Lacks O'Sullivan, Lysis Gottlieb, Ontario English Catholic Teachers Association, the Law Society of Upper Canada, UFCW, and we're, and we're Folds LLP. Thank you, thank you so much. And thank you to all of the organizations and firms that support LEAF throughout the year, and to the many donors, and to all of you who have purchased tickets uh, for tonight's event, and to our media sponsor, The President, who is here uh, somewhere. President, there she is. <laughs> thank you, thank you for supporting us. We could not survive without your support. All of you make it possible for us to do the important work that LEAF does in litigation, in law reform, and in public education. And LEAF is committed to this work. And last but not least, I want to thank the members of the 2017 Persons Day Honorary Committee, also to the Event Planning Committee. And I'd also like to thank Jane Cooney, who is not here this evening, our committee chair, Haley Morrison, LEAF's executive director, and Anna Fleury, our erstwhile staff member, all of whom have worked so very, very hard uh, with devotion uh, to tonight's success. So I, we're going to take we're going to take a break, and then we're going to come back. Nobody can leave because you know what's coming later, and that is a very special tribute to a very special person. So we're going to take a few minutes, about 20 or 30 minutes break. We have the walls. You've got to go, and as I said, get your picture taken because we want to see your picture on the walls. There is social media, our hashtag is here, our Twitter handle is here, you're gonna see it. Please share the, uh, the news of tonight with everybody and we will be back here shortly for more proceedings. Thank you very much, enjoy, and don't go away.